Hey everybody, good morning, good morning, good morning. It is July 15th, it is Wednesday, and it is currently 4 a.m. And I wanted to share with you guys the 30 Life Principles. This is a study you guys have been waiting for, especially if you're a part of the SIP family. But here it is, we are getting started. And we're going to take it slow, um, although there's kind of a structure to the study. We're still going to take it slow because there is a lot of notes you can take. There is a lot of great nuggets you can pull out, um, but it's going to take time. So before we get started, I want to welcome everybody to today's video. If you just happen to stumble across our video, I hope something is said and done is going to encourage you to draw closer to God. And also encourage you to hit that subscribe button and join the SIP family. If you're one of our faithful followers, welcome back, everyone. So before we get started, I do want to read over some prayers with scriptures before we get started. Um, it's always very important to um, pray and ask God to join you. Um, during your Bible study, invite the Holy Spirit in. And so let's get started. The first one is Luke chapter 18, verse 38. Have mercy on me, Lord. Please forgive me of my sins, known and unknown. Have mercy on me, Lord. Humble my heart, opening my eyes and ears so I may see and hear what the Holy Spirit needs me to know, see and hear. James chapter 1, verse 22. Make me a doer of your word. God, open my eyes to wonder and remind me of your grace. Allow the seeds from the scripture to bear real fruit, noticeable fruit, and tangible acts of sacrificial love for others. And then it's Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Open my eyes to Jesus, Lord. As I read, reveal to me what it is, um, what is it you need me to see? Speak to my heart and my eyes through creativity. In Psalms 119, verse 18, open my eyes to wonder. Lord, open my spiritual eyes to show me the glimpses of glory I cannot see by myself through your word. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. So here it is, 30 Life Principles by Charles Stanley, and it's facilitated by us at ministry. So the resources used during this study, um, these are the main ones. You have the 30 Life Principles, the Maroon Book, which is a more basic study book. It doesn't have, it's not super in-depth. And then you have the Life, um, the Action Plan for Living. This one is a more um, structured, it's set up for three days out of the week. And of course you can, uh, you know, change things up according to your work schedule and things that you have going on. Um, but, you know, we have started out wanting to do this study within 30 days, and it definitely turned out to be a bigger study than we expected. Um, so it's been some, um, you know, time waiting, trying to get things in order so that we can um, share with you guys the, what we can uh, to the best of our ability. And then finally, you have the Life Principles Bible. Now, there is a, a difference, and there's the other video that I shared with you guys, um, the difference, but um, the Life Principles Bible is set up like a regular Bible, but it has um, the principles throughout each book that apply to the specific chapters. And then the Daily Principles um, Bible, that one is dated from January 1st. Till December 31st. Um, so that one's like a day by day by day type reading. It's not um, the actual physical Bible. Um, so these are the things that I'll be using on top of um, my life, chronological life application study Bible, my apply the word study Bible, um, and resources. Of course, you guys know I like to use um, Blue Letter Bible app and things like that as far as researching. And of course, just Google, you guys. You have to use Google. Uh, so that you can work, uh, research things, especially if you don't have um, a lot of resources. So the introduction, and this is um, directly out of the life application. 
this is directly out of the book and this is from the maroon book and it says in his word god has given you hundreds of life principles to help you become everything that he designed you to be god has promised that if you follow his commands he will bless your obedience 30 life principles are guidelines for discovering the riches of god's truth and knowing god himself in a deep intimate relationship by following these principles you will be you'll be on the road to the life that he designed for you and as you submit yourself to him more fully god will reveal himself to you that's what makes the journey of obedience so exciting charles stanley so again just within the introduction the key thing this is a deep this is to learn um god in a deeper more intimate way um so you have to take your time don't rush through it although we kind of have a structure from the physical books and things um you know i'm still going to go through the motions of everything try to set it up um and so the videos may not be um you know every day just depending on how much notes we can take and you're going to see why shortly so life principle one so the way we have it set up you guys um it is um i have it for sunday like you read through the introduction you have some the life questions what the bible says what it means and life examples uh, before you get into and those are from the maroon book and then day one day two and um, day three all come from the blue book and you guys will see what i'm talking about shortly um when i show you guys the pdf that we have made available in our facebook group for those who don't have the physical books um, you can definitely still follow along and participate and um, you know do the study on your own um, just with the PDF and I just kind of rearranged it differently uh, so if you bought both books you guys can kind of flip through and figure out uh, what is what but I set it up this way so it's um, not a bunch of studying in one setting I wanted to break it up um, use the days that it goes coincide to so it's not overwhelming because this is a definitely an important study I feel um, learning the life principles so Sunday your intimacy with God his highest priority for your life determines the impact of your life then God said let us make man in our image according to um, our likeness I'm sorry for the typo and it's genesis chapter 1 verse 26. so principles and action so um in the book you guys see in the blue book you guys see a section where it says principles and actions um these are the names of people in the bible who put the principle into action how um they have been listed um, in the lessons use the scripture reference provided to learn more about their lives and the way in which they followed or fail to show God's instructions. So some of them um, are, um, and I think it's Finus, and it's Numbers chapter 25, verse 10 through 13. Um, then you have Deborah in Judges chapter four, verse uh, one through chapter five, verse 31. You have Mary of Bethany, chapter, uh, John chapter 12, verse one through eight. You have Timothy chapter one, I mean, I'm sorry, first Timothy chapter one, verses two and 18. And then you also have James um, in James chapter one, verse one. So step one of this study, you guys, you're going to read through each key verses provided per, per, uh, per person. Read it through once or even listen to it through a Bible app like you version. And then read it again, highlighting things that stand out to you. Write out some notes or even complete a chapter summary and adapt it to what you read. So for those of you who are part of our chronological study, you guys have been using a chapter summary template. You can definitely still use a chapter summary um, based off of, um, you know, you just reconstruct it, meaning if it's only a few verses, then you break down those three um, or four verses, however many it is, 
following the same steps again like you guys realize you probably won't be able to answer everything and that's okay um you fill out what you can but it'll help you break down the verse this is a good way also for anyone who is verse mapping um, to verse map what you have read okay so those are just some ideas you don't have to do it you can just read it and take self notes and that's it that is totally up to you so the first step is remember you're going to read these scriptures some are full chapters like here is genesis i mean judges chapter four and five some are just a, most of these are just a few verses um so it shouldn't take too long but definitely don't skip over it read the stories and um i'm going to tell you another way to get some resources so here is a copy of my digital notes. I did this in GoodNotes, um, and I wanted to share with you guys what they look like um, completed for the first one. Um, so I titled it uh, First Principle. Um, principle one, our intimacy with God, his highest priority for our lives um, determines the impact of our lives. And it's set up in the Cornell style um, note-taking method. Um, these templates are provided in GoodNotes. Um, so you have regular blind paper, um, graph paper, all these types of things that you can use in good notes. Um, so I'm going to share an example, which is this one on how I did it um, in um, good notes digitally. So here I put the name and I want to say it's um, fi Finus. Um, and I will check back um, with you guys and let you guys know if I said that correctly. But what I like here is you guys can, um, you can insert pictures to kind of go along with your um, notes and everything. So I really, really like that about um, digital planning. You can still do the same with writing them out. You just have to print it and everything. Um, but I like it like this. Um, so the Hebrew Strong's number for the definition, and this was a typo right here. So the correct one is right here. It's H6372. Um, and then they have the Hebrew name, and it means mouth of grass and mouth of a serpent. Then it has some more information. And here I use Blue Letter Bible app. And what I do is I just go, um, you can type in the name in Blue Letter Bible app, or you can look up the scripture verses that was given to you, which is Numbers 25, verses 10 through 13. And... Um, Hover, hover over the interlinear button so that way you can break down the verse that it's a part of and you can get this great information. So it says, son of Eleazar and grandson of Aaron, his um, zealousness and for the Lord averted a plague on Israel and gained him the promise of the Lord um, of an everlasting priesthood in his family. Then a priest and the son of the priest um, Eli, the father of a helper of Israel, of Israel. So then what I did was I highlighted, you guys know I like color coding everything. So names and things like that is one color. Uh, words I want to define in another color, places in another color. You guys can do anything how you like to color code or underline or highlight. Get creative with it. Um, so I underlined the names and then some words that I wanted to define. Now, the words you can define, even though there may be words you already know what they mean and everything, but sometimes it's good just to refresh and pull them out um, and see what, um, how you can relate it to the stories. So the first was Eleazar. So Eleazar was God has helped, which was what it meant. And then the high priest son of Aaron, um, Abadab's son who cared for the ark, um, the priest who rebuilt and dedicated the restored walls of Jerusalem in the time of Ezra, one of David's mighty warriors, a Levite, and one of the line um, of uh, Parash. And I got a picture here, and then uh, I went to Aaron, grandson of Aaron. And Aaron means light bringer brother of Moses, a Levite, and the first high priest. And I have a picture here. And then I went on to um, define the other words. Now, at the end here, I have 
How has accepting God as my Lord and Savior impacted my life? And through the Life Application Bible, sometimes it gives you a question. And that's what I use these bottom parts of the Cornell note-taking method on things to ponder, questions to answer um, that I may want to go back and answer. So I just put accepting Christ as my Lord and Savior has changed my life forever. It gives me a forever father friend. And I know whenever I need him, he is there to talk um, with me through the good, the bad, and the ugly of my life. I'm never alone. I have someone I can call on and will always be there no matter what. And you guys can answer um, any way that pertains to you. So again, the title still stays the same. So zealousness, full of, characterized by, or due to zeal, uh, ardently active, devoted, or diligent, averted, turn away, one's eye or thoughts prevent or ward of, an undesirable occurrence, plague, a contagious bacterial disease characterized by the fever or delirium, a contagious disease that spreads rapidly and kills many people because um, continual trouble or distress. Israel, Jewish homeland, um, the boundaries of Israel have changed many times during the past 4,000 years, and the land has been called by different names, including Judah, Judea, and Palestine. The land of Israel is named after a person who lived about 4,000 I mean, 4, years ago. He originally was known as Jacob, and he was the father of the 12 sons whose descendants are known as the 12 tribes of Israel. And then I define promise, assure um, someone that one will definitely do, give or arrange something, undertake or declare that something will happen. And then you can take some of these key things in there, put it back in the scripture and uh, reread it. And then I did some research here and it says, and I wanna say it's Phil, Philip uh, uh, Finn, a fin puss. I gotta figure out what this was again. I can't remember. Um, but is a famous um is famous for his uh, zealotry or zealotry um in slaying Zimri, the uh Lycidas leader of the tribe of Simon, thus halting a deadly divine scent plague afflicting the Jewish nation, a reward that he was granted priesthood according to the mid Midrashic uh, sources, uh, Finus is the same person as Elijah the prophet. And I put a note here, wow, need to do a compare and contrast because I didn't know that. And so I put the reference here where I got that from so that I can research more about it later. And then the next part was um, Numbers 25, 10 through 13. And this was the key um, scripture for the reading. And it says, from um, Finus, sorry, we learn anger is proper and justified. So I apologize, you guys, if I keep saying this wrong. Um, and then it says, why was um, he angry? Well, because of his zeal for the Lord. And remember, zeal, great energy or enthusiasm in pursuit of a cause or an um, object. So the, this came from the footnotes of the Chronological Life application. And this is why I like it so much, because it gives you some questions to ponder on and things that you can apply to your life. So how can I know when anger is appropriate and when it should be restrained? Ask these questions when I become angry. Why am I angry? Whose rights are being violated, mine or another's? Is the truth a principle of God um, being by, violated? If only my rights are at stake, it may be wiser to keep angry feelings under control. And that's it. That is a simple breakdown. After you read your chapter, this is um, how I broke it down. And this is what it looks like on my digital, uh, my digital notes. Now, the remainder of the video will, uh, will not be um, showing my digital notes. Um, I'm going to show you just in a regular template form because I want you to be able to form your notes um, to the best of your ability. You may not like the Cornell notes um, styling method. You could use any type of method, bullets, arrows, squiggly lines, whatever it is that you want to do. 
I will share a flip through of my notes as we complete each um, section. So maybe two or three times as you guys will see a flip through of my notes, but it won't be like this all the time, okay? So this is just an example of the first person. So I hope you guys like it. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns about it, leave it down below and I will answer your questions. So the next person is Deborah's Judges chapter four, verses one through chapter five, verse 31. And so the same process begins. You're gonna research the name, find some information out. Um, it could be as basic as you want it or as in depth as you want it. Um, so here is um, the Hebrew number is H1683. It means her name means B. Um, it's the nurse of Rebecca who accompanied her from the house of Bethel. Um, in the Blue Letter Bible app for the definition of her name, that's how they spell Bethel. Um, and it's also, she was a prophetess who judged Israel. And a prophetess is a female prophet. Um, and then I defined Israel as well. That's why they're highlighting green. And that's um, H3478, God prevails. The name used given to the Northern Kingdom consisting of the 10 tribes under Jeroboam and Southern Kingdom also was known as Judah. The name of the nation after the return from the exile. So that's just some information that I gathered. So step two, use any of the resources you have. Pull out any footnotes that grab, um, footnotes that grab your attention. Dive deeper into those if they have extra references. I like to use my life applications um, Bible and also my apply the word um, study Bible, but you can use any resources, online resources that you like. David Gusick on Blue Letter Bible app has great commentary. It could be anything. Um, and this is why I say it's going to take some time because now step one, you have read all the chapters for all one, two, three, four, five. Um, people that have been listed, you have read the chapters, you have built your either summary or verse map some things so that you can pull out some nuggets from it. Prior to actually diving into the study, now you're going to pull out some of your resources and you're going to look at the footnotes. You're going to see what they give you, any extra information to add to your notes, okay? So here are some footnotes from the Life Application Bible. So Judges chapter four, verse one, Israel sinned in the Lord's sight. Our sin harms both ourselves and others, but all sin is ultimately against God because it disregards his commands and his authority over us. When confessing his um, sin, David prayed against you and you alone, I have sinned and I have done what is evil in your sight. Psalms 51, four, recognizing the seriousness of sin is the first step towards removing it from our lives and how great is that those of you who have studied the victory series book one we are covering sin we are covering um the steps of that right asking god for one confessing your sin asking god for forgiveness and then true repentance right you're repenting and asking telling god that you're not going to do that again and that you are going to make the necessary changes needed um to make that change right so good stuff judges chapter 4 verse 2 through 3 nothing more is known about javen joshua had defeated a king by the name years earlier and burnt the city of hazar um to the ground in joshua 11 1 through 11. either the city was now rebuilt or this javen was hoping to rebuild it this is on, the only time during the period of Judges when the Israelites' enemies came from their land. The Israel, Israelites had failed to drive out um, all the Canaanites. These Canaanites had regrouped and were attempting to restore their lost power. If the Israelites had obeyed God in the first place and had driven the Canaanites from the land, um, this incident would not have happened. And what else do we see here, you guys? The Canaanites. If you guys are studying the chronological, um, study, doing the chronological study with us, we have learned about the Canaanites. Pull out your notes. See anything that you can pull out, okay? Uh, chapter 4, verse 2, two, two 3 continues. Chariots were the tank of the ancient world, made of iron or wood. 
They were pulled by one or two horses and were the most feared and powerful weapons of the day. Some chariots even had razor sharp knives extending from the wheels designed to uh, mutilate um, helpless foot soldiers. I'm sorry, mutilate, mutilate helpless foot soldiers. It is super early, you guys. The Canaanite army had 900 iron chariots. Israel was not powerful enough to defeat such an invincible army. Therefore, Jabin and Sisera had no trouble oppressing the people until a faithful woman named Deborah called upon God. So what do we see here? They, they overlap, right? You have Deborah here, you know? And so start looking at these things, how um, her life, start putting all these things together. Um, chapter 4, verse 3, after 20 years of unbearable circumstances, the Israelites finally cried to the Lord for help. But God should be the first one we turn um, to when facing struggles or dilemmas. The Israelites chose to go their own way and got into a mess. We often do the same, trying to control our own lives without God helps lead, help leads to struggle and confusion. By contrast, when we stay in, the, in daily contact with the Lord, we are less likely to create painful circumstances for ourselves. This is a lesson of the Israelites never fully learned. When struggles come our way, God wants us to come to him first, seek his strength and guidance. So just within these footnotes, you guys, we have some great key points here um, that God is telling us lessons that he is wanting you to learn. Um, Genesis, um, Genesis, Judges 4 and 4, the Bible records several women who held national leadership positions, and Deborah was an exceptional woman. Obviously, she was the best person for the job, and God chose her to lead Israel. God can choose anyone to lead his people, young or old, man or woman. Don't let your prejudices prejudices get in the way of those God have made, may have chosen to lead you. Another great note here. Um, in Judges 4, 6, and 8, when Barak cowardly or just in need of support, um, we don't know Barak's character, but we see the character of a great leader in Deborah who took charge as God directed. Um, di directed. Deborah told Barak that God would be with him in battle, but that was not enough for Barak. He wanted Deborah to go with him. Barak's request shows that, a, um, that at heart, he trusted human strength more than God's promise. A person of real faith steps out at God's command, even if having to do so alone. Another key thing here, uh, for nine, how did Deborah command such respect? She was responsible for leading the people into battle, but more than that, she influenced them to live for God after the battle was over. Her personality drew people together and commanded the respect of even Barak, a military general. She was also a prophet whose main role was to encourage the people to obey God. Those who led must not forget about the spiritual conditions of those being led. A true leader is concerned for the people themselves, not just success. Judges 4.11, Heber and Jael's husband, in Judges 4.17, he, um, he was from the Kenite tribe, descendants of Moses' father-in-law, the longtime allies of Israel. But for some reason, Heber decides to remain neutral in this war. Maybe um, attitude. Oh, I'm sorry. I went too far. Maybe because Jabin's army appeared to have the military advantage. It was probably Heber who told uh, Sisera um, that the Israelites were camped near Mount Tabor. In Judges 4:12, although Heber threw in his lot, uh, threw in his lot with Jabin and his forces, his wife Jael um, did not. In Judges 4:21, in verse 18 through 21, Sisera couldn't have been more pleased when Jael offered him her tent and hiding place. Um, first, because Jael was the wife of Heber, a male's 
a man friendly to Caesar, uh, Caesar's forces. See the note in Judges 4.11. So there's more. Um, you can go back to the one we just did. He thought she could be trusted. Second, because men were never allowed to enter a woman's tent. No one would think to look for Caesarea there. Even though her husband, Heber, apparently sided with Caesarea's forces, um, JL certainly did not. Because women of that day were in charge of pitching the tents, JL had no problem driving the tent peg um, into Caesarea's head while he slept. Deborah's prediction was thus fulfilled. The honor of conquering Caesarea went to a brave and resourceful woman in Judges 4.9. Uh, now we're into chapter 5, verse 1. Music and singing were a cherished part of Israel's culture. Um, Judges 5 is a song sung and possibly composed by Deborah and Barak. It's set to it sets, it sets to music the story of Israel's great victory described in Judges 4. This victory song was accompanied by joyous celebration. It proclaimed God's greatness by giving him credit for the victory. It was an excellent way to preserve, preserve the, and retell this wonderful story from generation to generation. Um, and also in verse five, in victory, Barak and Deborah sang praises to God. Songs of praise focus our attention on God, gives us an outlet for spiritual celebration and remind us of God's faithfulness and character. Whether you are experiencing a great victory or a major dilemma, Singing praises to God can have a positive effect on your attitude. And then verse eight, war was the in inevitable results, uh, result when Israel chose to follow false gods. Although God had given Israel clear direction, the people failed to put his words into practice. Without God at the center of their national life, pressure from the outside soon became greater than power from within. And there were an easy prey. They were easy, were an easy prey for their enemies. If you are letting a desire for recognition, craving for power, or love for money, of money rule your life, you may find yourself um, besieged by enemies, stress, anxiety, illness, fatigue. Keep God at the center of your life, and you will have the power you need to fight these destroyers. Key point here: What is God telling you? Uh, 15 through 17, four tribes, Reuben, Gilead, um, either Gad or Man Manasseh, Dan, and Esher were accused of not lending a helping hand in the battle. No reasons are given for their refusal to help their father, its fellow Israelites, but they may be the same ones that stopped them from driving out, of Can driving out the Canaanites in the first place. Lack of reliance on God for help. Uh, re yeah, reliance on God for help, lack of effort, fear of the enemy, and fear for antagonizing those whom uh, they did business with and thus prospered from. This disobedience showed both a lack of commitment to God's plan and a weak faith in God's power. So, so good, so good. So, you guys, um, before we move on to uh, the next person, these are some great footnotes. So if you don't have the Life Application Bible, you will see them here as we read and everything, break down things. Um, but I want you to guys, um, if you do have it, pull out your Bibles, highlight things, underline things that stick out to you, what's important, what are things God is telling you to do. Um, some key points, and that's what you do here, okay? So you're going to pull out, these are just one of my resources. You can pull out as many resources as you want. But just remember when you're doing a Bible study, right? Your Bible study is, is only going to go as deep as you allow it to be. Um, you don't want to get so consumed in it. You want to um, enjoy it. So just take your time. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Maybe you're going to study for 30 minutes. Maybe you're going to study for an hour. Um, you know, you have to break it up for what works for you because again how i do things is just an example um on and it shows how i do my studying and i like to do in-depth studying so all these key verses and things that are listed and extra information if it's a scripture outside of it i go and i read it i try to see how it ties in and everything you don't have to do that all these people that are mentioned i may go ahead and look them up 
especially if I don't know who they are or any, you know, information on them, I go and look it up, you know, so that way I know. And um, with that, with Deborah, you, I want you guys to use your resources. We're doing the Women's of the Bible Study. So if you have the books, uh, you can pull up their um, information, read through the book um, early. You know, we're not re we haven't read about them yet, um, but you can still go ahead, read through it, read the chapter, read what information it gives you. Maybe it'll give you a good nugget out of it. That's something that I'm going to do, and I'm definitely going to share with you guys in a later video. So the next person is Mary of Bethany, and that's John chapter 12, verse 1 through 8. So just like I did, um, Deborah, and um, you're going to look up the name, get some information. So it's, uh, the Strong's number is G3137. Remember, the New Testament, anything in the New Testament is Greek. Anything in the Old Testament is Hebrew, which is why you have the G or the H here in the Strong's number. Um, and the name means their rebellion. And this Mary of Bethany is the sister of Lazarus and Martha. Um, and so I have a note here. You can use other resources to gather more information, oops, more information and research. But if you have purchased the books to the Women's of the Bible devotional um, books, you can look, um, look them up and read about their story and gather more insight. This is what I will do for more notes and share in a later video. So here is some footnotes from the Life Application Study Bible. So before we move into um, any further, so Mary of Bethany's scripture was John chapter 12, verse 1 through 8. And I want you guys to see, if you guys have the Chronological Life Application Bible um, in chronological order, because there's one in chronological order and there's one that's not. But if you look at it in chronological order, I want you to quickly see how Matthew 26, Mark 14, all these extra scripture references that go with John chapter 12. Um, so this gives you some exciting information um, that ties into this story that's in a separate book. So great uh, resource here, key references here um, to look at. So you have Matthew 26, verse 7. I'm going to read through these footnotes. This woman was Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, who lived in Bethany, John chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. Alabaster jars were carved from the translucent gem, uh, gemsum. These jars were used to hold perfume oil. In Matthew 26, 8, all the disciples were in, um, in, indignant but John's gospel singles out Judas, um, Ice, um, Ice, uh, Isaacar, um, as especially so in John chapter 12, verse 4 through 6. In Matthew 26, 11, here Jesus brought back to mind in Deuteronomy 15, 11, there will always be some in the land who are poor. This statement does not justify ignoring the, need of the, the needs of the poor, Scripture continually exhorts us to care for the needy. The passage in Deuteronomy continues that this is why I am commanding you to share freely with the poor and with other Israelites in need. Rather by saying this, Jesus highlighted the special sacrifice Mary had Mary made for him. In Mark chapter four, 14, verse 3, Bethany is located on the eastern slope of the Mount Olives. Jerusalem is on the western side. This town was the home of Jesus, Jesus' friends, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, who were also present at this dinner in John chapter 11, verse 2. The woman who anointed Jesus' feet was Mary, Lazarus, and Martha's sister in John chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. So right here, you get what? You get your place. You get your people. You get who they are. You get what's going on. You get some of those things that you can use um, in your chapter summary templates as you're doing this study to break it down. You have to learn how to use the different resources. I know just from experience that we buy so many things, right? But we don't use it to the, uh, the full capacity of what they could be used for. Rather, that's verse mapping templates, word study templates, um, character study templates, um, chapter summary templates. There's so many things that you guys have, especially if you're a part of our 
group um, things that we have used and shared and worked through that you can learn to adapt these things through your studies okay um some more footnotes and here we are now we're in mark so now we see that chapter 12 of john parallels or um, intertwines with matthew 26 mark 14. So Mark 14, verses 4 through 5, whereas Mark says, some of those at the table, John specifically mentions Judas in John chapter 12, verse 4 through 5. Judas' indignation over Mary's act of worship was based not on concern for the poor, but on greed. Because Judas was the treasurer of Jesus' ministry, had embezzled funds, and had embezzled funds in John chapter 12, 6, he no doubt wanted the perfume sold so that he could benefit from the proceeds. In John, uh, Mark chapter 14, verse 6 and 7, Jesus was not saying that we should neglect the poor, nor was he justifying indifference to them. For Jesus teaching about the poor, see, and it gives you some scripture references, Matthew 6, two, uh, chapter 6, verses 2 through 4, Luke chapter 6, 20 and 21, uh, Luke chapter... I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 14, oh no, I'm sorry, Luke 14, 13, and verse 21, and also Luke 18, 22. Jesus was praising Mary for her, un, her unselfish act of worship. The essence of worshiping Christ is to, um, is to regard him with utmost love, respect, and devotion, and to be willing to sacrifice to him what is the most precious. In John chapter 12, 13, essence of nard was a fragrant ointment imported from the mountains of India. Thus, it was very expensive. The amount Mary used was worth a year's wages. In John chapter 12, verse 4 through 6, Judas often dipped into um, the disciples' money bag for his own use. Quit, um, quite, I'm sorry, quit. Quite likely, Jesus knew what Judas was doing. In John chapter 2, verse 24 through 25, in chapter 6, verse 64. But he never did or say anything about it. Similarly, we choose the way of sin. God may not immediately do anything to stop us, but this does not mean he approves of our actions. What we deserve will come. Key point, good thing to write. Um, judge, uh, John chapter 12, verse 5 through 6, Judas used a pious phrase to hide his true motives. But Jesus knew what was in his heart. Judas' life had become a lie, and the devil was gaining more and more control over him in John chapter 13, verse 27. Satan is the father of lies, and the lying character opens the door to his influence. Um, Jesus' knowledge of Jesus' knowledge of us should make us want to keep our actions consistent with our words, because we have nothing to fear with him. We should have nothing to hide. Good point, okay? Uh, the last two is John chapter 12, verse 7 and 8. This act of and G, uh, this act and Jesus responds, uh, do not teach us to ignore the poor so we can spend money extravagantly um, for Christ. This was a unique act of a specific occasion, an anointing that anticipated Jesus' burial and a public declaration of faith in him as Messiah. Jesus' words should have taught Judas a valuable lesson about the worth of money. Unfortunately, Judas did not take heed. Soon he would sell his master's life for 30 pieces of silver. In Judges, Judges John chapter 12, verse 10 through 11, the leading priest's blind, blindness and hardness of heart caused them to sink um, ever deeper into sin. They rejected the Messiah and planned to kill him and they plotted to murder Lazarus as well. One sin leads to another. From the Jewish leader's point of view, they could accuse Jesus of blasphemy because he claimed um, equality with, with God. But Lazarus had done nothing of, that, of the kind. They wanted Lazarus dead simply because he was a living witness of Jesus' power. This is a warning to us to avoid sin. Sin leads to more sin, a downward spiral that can be stopped only by repentance and the power of the Holy Spirit to change our behavior. So some great footnotes here again, because you guys, if you guys, again, I cannot stress this enough, things that we are doing in our group, you guys will start seeing how these themes and words start tying things together. So here again, we have repentance and we're discussing that 
in victory series. Um, so use those notes, use these things that you're learning in these different studies and pull your thoughts together, see how you can um, parallel some of these things in your thoughts and how you feel about certain things, okay? Um, Timothy, it's 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 2 and 18. So using the Blue Letter Bible app, you know, I just look up these verse, get, um, get the Strong's number and the definition. So it is G5095, um, and it means honoring God. A resident of Lystra, apparently whose father was a Greek and mother was a mother a Jew, Jewish. He was Paul's traveling companion and fellow laborer. Remember to do more research if you like to get more notes. Everyone studies differently, so you may not want to go deeper, and that is okay too. And I can't stress that enough. Um, I do things one way, um, but again, I don't want you to get overwhelmed um, or feel like, oh my God, it's so, so, so much. You know, you if you're doing the chronological study, if you're doing Women's of the Bible, if you're doing scripture writing, you may be doing some Bible studies um, elsewhere. Whatever it is, don't put more on yourself than you can. Find a balance. Um, so if that means you're only working on the 30 life principles, you know, once a week, twice a week. Um, you know, that is okay. You just keep going from wherever you left off. And I cannot stress that enough. Um, so footnotes from the Life Application Bible for um, Timothy is 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. Paul highly valued the gift of prophecy in 1 Corinthians 14, 1. Though uh, through prophecy, um, important messages and uh, warnings and encouragement came to the church. Just as pastors are ordained and set apart for ministry in the church today, Timothy had been set apart for ministry when elders laid their hands on him in 1 Timothy 4.14. Apparently at this ceremony, ser several believers had prophesied about Timothy's gifts and strength. These words from the Lord must have encouraged Timothy throughout his ministry. So then you can get more information right here, 1 Corinthians 14.1 to get some extra footnotes. Um, the last person we have is James chapter, is James and it's James chapter one, verse one. Again, using the Blue Letter Bible app, I just pull up the Strong's number and that's G2385 and Supplanter. Um, and then he is James, the half brother of Christ. So here we have um, some more footnotes for it. And um, here I also left it some extra notes here. Um, I wanted you guys to see how James um, coincides with Acts chapter 14. And you have some Acts 15 and 7 and 12. And so for me, when I'm reading these things, then I will go and, you know, read all of this, take notes that are given here, um, just because I know that they are tied together. And this is why I um, believe that I really have the desire to study the word in chronological order, because now you can see how these verses intertwine with one another outside of just reading Acts or Matthew and Mark and you know, James, because they're not all like right next to each other. So then if you don't know, then, you know, you don't know how to build from it. You have to use all these resources. So I think reading it and studying the Bible in chronological order um, is very important and a great way of learning how these stories and chapters and books of the Bible intertwine with one another. So I left it here so you can definitely pause the video and read through the first ones. I'm going to start right here at the bottom, but you can definitely read these here at the top to get more information. So just hit the pause button um, if you need to. And the first one is James chapter one, verses one. The writer of this letter and leader of the church in Jerusalem, you can see Acts 12, 17 and 15, 13, some more cross references, was James, Jesus' half brother, not James the apostle. The book of James was one of the earliest letters, probably written before AD 50, after Stephen was uh, martyred in Acts chapter 7, verse 55 through chapter 8, verse 3. 
and persecution increased and Christians in Jerusalem were scattered throughout the Roman world. There were, th they, there were thriving Jewish Christian communities in Rome, Alexandria, Cyprus, and cities in Greece and Asia and Asia's uh, minor. Because of these early believers did not have the support of established Christian churches, James wrote to them as a concerned leader to encourage them in their faith during those difficult times. Um, in James chapter one, verses two through three, James doesn't say if trouble comes your way, but when it does, he assumes that we will have troubles and that is um, that it is possible to profit from them. The point is not to pretend to be happy when we face pain, but to have a positive outlook. Consider it an opportunity for great joy. Because of what troubles can produce in our lives, James tells us to turn our hardships into times of learning. Tough times can teach us per, uh, perseverance. There are many other passages that deal with perseverance, also called patience and steadfast, uh, steadfast, uh, steadfastness. Um, and you can see Romans chapter two, verse seven, chapter five, verse three through five, chapter eight, verse 24 through 50, 2 Corinthians 6, uh, verses 3 through 7, and 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 2 through 9. So after you've done the reading, after you pulled out some footnotes, so that's step one and two, now you get into step three. After reading and getting familiar with the people who put this principle in action, and rather they passed or failed, now you are ready to dive into the study. Now you're familiar with what's going on. You have better understanding. And now when you go into the study, you will be able to pull these things together. So let's look at the PDF that we provided. So that way you guys can see and have better understanding. I have one physical book, which is the Maroon book. And then I have the action plan book um, digitally. Um, so it's easier for me to show you guys um, using the PDF. All right, so here you guys can see a few things here. Um, this is the PDF that was made um, for those in our group and who could not um, purchase these books. We wanna make sure that if we're able to um, make it available, because uh, we understand finances are not great for everyone, um, but we want everybody to have the opportunity to still participate. So this is what the PDF looks like. It has the title, then principle one. And as you can see here with the PDF, I broke it down um, so that you, it'll be easier, not overwhelming, and it'll help you with scheduling like times or days um, to actually do this study. Um, and it has both books. So here you guys can see that it's a mix. This PDF is a mix of what's in here and what's in here. So your principles and actions comes out of this blue book. Um, and then we so we just did this we went through all the people in action and then we're going to get into the life questions um and everything so you you're going to read all of this and this will be in the next video because i'm going to annotate it i'm going to write some notes for you guys um so again i want these videos to be um not super long, but also very informational for those of you guys who are, um, you know, following along and wanting to see. Um, but so I saw I'm taking the time right now to show you guys through the um, videos. Now, remember, with the relaunch of everything this week, it's a little wonky uh, as far as uploading videos. But come next week, everything should start flowing better. Um, but you have so Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, we are going to start with this section. So Sunday, you're going to read through these chapters. You're going to take some notes. You're going to read through the footnotes. And then after that, then you're going to read the life um, questions. And after you read it, you have some scripture references. You're going to do the same thing. Grab your Bibles. Look at some scripture references. And then you have what the Bible says. 
Now, what the Bible says, this part comes from the Maroon book, um, and it's also in the um, the other book as well. So I just wanted to combine it to the best of my ability so that way it flowed well, um, so you guys could um, be able to follow along, okay? And I want to just verify this. Give me one second. So yeah, so this one you have um, in the pink, in pink book, in the blue book, you have your life questions and then you have your days broken down and then you have um, living principles. So this, what the Bible says and some other sections are from the maroon book so this is the maroon book uh what you're going to read it then you're going to read genesis 1 look it look it you see how this stuff starts paralleling together um you have genesis 1 you're going to answer some questions you have james here some more questions and it's this one is very short not too long and then you're going to read what it means you're going to read it have some questions you're going to answer it then your life examples. Here you are, Genesis 3. So more life examples. You're going to read it, answer some questions. So if you guys have studied, used the chronological study, pull out your notes. You may just have to listen to it and refresh a little bit, but you have some great resources and information already. So again, you're going to answer these questions and um, see what you get. And then after that, then you're gonna take a break. And this gives you some time, so that's Sunday. So you have Sunday and Monday to read, 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 answer some questions. And then um, Tuesday, you get into day one, and this is from the Blue Book. So the Blue Book also has some questions and other, it's a setup, it's set up like this for three days. Um, so Tuesday, now you're gonna read this, highlight, make some notes, underline some things, define some things, look at the scripture references, answer the questions. All right, and then after that, um, you take a break. So then you have Tuesday, Wednesday to get through um, day one. So don't rush, rush yourself. So after day one, then uh, day two is Thursday. So then you have Thursday, Friday, once again, to read through everything, highlight, take some notes, all those great things, answer the questions. You have some scriptures to read, look up some footnotes, use your application study Bible um, to see how you can apply it to your life. And then on Saturday, you have Saturday to close it out. And it's not so much, so you probably get it all done. Uh, you're going to do some reading, answer some of the questions, um, meditate, see the scripture references, answer a few questions, read some of the scriptures, use the footnotes. And then you have some living the principles. So it gives you on how to use principle one, right? How to apply it to your daily life. So you can answer these questions. You can write things out on note cards, put them on your wall, um, you know, make notes of it. So it's going to give you some questions. How will you live out principle one this week? You can ponder. This is private. You know, meditate on it, pray on it. It gives you some more information, some more reading and highlighting. And right here, life lessons to remember. And these are all key things, right? So you can write these down as um, key notes on an index card, put them with your principle one. Um, look up these scripture references, see if the Life Application Bible gives you any extra questions or things to ponder. Um, and this is how you close it out. And then after that, you have a section here, if you guys are using the PDFs, notes and prayer requests so here you'll have anything your key points questions prayer requests things you want to pray over that you learned um, from this lesson and that is it
so this study is a um, you have um, um sorry guys i lost my train of thought uh, we have this lesson um, each lesson is a set up the same way so you have saturday thursday and tuesday so you have you know we use our we plan out our things um uh, sunday through saturday right so you have sunday tuesday thursday saturday um for this study so you're going to use spread it out throughout your week don't overwhelm yourself again sometimes it may overlay right you may you know depending on your notes and the things that you're finding and the nuggets it may take you longer than one week it's okay um and i'm definitely going to take this journey with you guys i'm going to um do the reading do the notes do all these things and share it with you guys so again yes we have a structure for it and what we want um as far as trying to get the content out to you but just know that this study may not flow uh, consistently um on these specific days that we gave um but even if they're like cut in half or something uh, we will try our best to make sure that you guys um, are getting uh, some type of content to keep flowing with everything. Um, so remember this first week is a little wonky, but uh, now you guys see what the PDF looks like. So if you're a part of our Facebook group, um, the PDF is in the unit section um, for you guys. You can grab it, print it out and follow along and answer the questions, do the reading, all these things. And um, let's get going on principle one. I'm so excited. So thank you for watching. Comment below your thoughts, your questions, any great nuggets you got from the people who put this principle um, in action. So you have read everything um, and just take your time, you guys, take your time, take your time. Highlight, pull as much as you can out of this study. And remember, use the resources that you have already used with that is the um your chapter summaries use your um b book information especially anything pertaining to genesis especially the early chapters um and then use your you know word studies different things that stick out your character study templates all these other things that you have that were that have been given and used within the group um use your resources to the full capacity okay but most importantly one always pray before you get started invite god and the holy spirit into your study time remember to be in a quiet place don't be so distracted and you know at the end of the day your notes and everything is going to reflect on how much time you put into the study you can definitely just read the book as it is read what the information is there and answer the questions and not go deep um, that's totally up to you, but you guys know that I study um, in depth, so I will be getting with you guys um, as I start and get everything going. Um, sharing my notes, you guys, share my notes and share, um, you know, what they look like, like I just showed you guys, and I may not read through everything um, all the way, but you guys will still get a glimpse of what and how I do things. And if there's anything specific you guys want me to share or do, um, please leave them in the comments below and um, I will try my best to accommodate as much as possible. All right, so you guys enjoy the rest of your day. I wanted to get this video out and started. Again, I apologize. I know this week is gonna be a little wonky on videos, but I'm super excited about the July um relaunch we're getting things going get things flowing and um you know happy studying i'll see you guys soon bye